Alex Salmon is to bring down Nicola Sturgeon in two days, the Scottish government is in turmoil and the British police say that being offensive is an offence. Hello everyone, welcome to today's first program. I am back. Uh, as most of you know, I took a break for the uh, last couple of days. Uh, it was quite difficult. I, firstly, I've received a lot of really nice and kind messages because it was quite difficult. I d didn't really want to do it because I know a lot of people rely on the, the daily videos that we do on this channel to stay up to date with everything. It was a difficult decision, but the support that I got from you guys, the emails, the messages on social media, absolutely amazing. It was actually quite needed, this break. But now I'm back, fully fresh. There's a lot to talk about. Um, firstly, the Prime Minister just announced his roadmap to unlock the country. I got my own opinions, but he just announced it. So give me some time. I'll do um, a proper video on this after this one. But in this one, let's focus on the Scottish government because it's not looking well. We have two days to go until Alex Salmon appears in front of the Scottish Parliament to apparently give evidence against Nicola Sturgeon to expose her uh, and mention that she actually did mislead the Scottish Parliament. Now she has to resign. This is actually um, escalating on a different level because we've been talking about this potential inquiry and the, the hearing that Alex Salmon was going to have to expose Sturgeon because the main focus was uh, he wants to expose her so that she resigns. But then now there are other people getting involved, including the head of civil service uh, in Scotland, the permanent secretary, uh, who is uh, now under pressure to also get sacked because she was also apparently involved. The Times uh, reports this and says that um, apparently there were civil servants who uh, knew about this. They decided not to uh, inform the First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, about you know, these allegations against Alex Salmon. This is you know, years ago, back in 2017, 18. And uh, now she's on, under pressure. And also some of other people, included, including the Lord Advocate. Now, the problem that we have is that uh, so firstly, you've got these submissions that are understood to relate to documents and not handed to the inquiry committee by either the government nor the Crown Office. Um, so you've got Leslie Evans, who's the permanent secretary, but also James Wolfe, who's the Lord Advocate. Now, these people are now involved, so they could go down. Um, and the whole thing so far has cost more than £500,000, taxpayers' money. Ordinary people in this country have been funding this whole saga they're not going to get the money back then no one's going to win at this everyone's going to be a loser i mean the only winner could actually potentially be ordinary people in scotland who could uh, once the smp and their leadership is exposed eventually the country could move on from having the smp as the main you know one party state sort of situation but again the elections are coming up in may so it's still highly likely that the smp will win just about but the issue is the future of for Scotland and the United Kingdom in general. Now, as we said, there are two names who are now involved, the top of civil service and also Nicola Sturgeon's husband. The theory is that the, the speculations are saying that they're now using these people to throw them under the bus to save Nicola Sturgeon. So her husband could go. Leslie Evans could go um, as long as Nicola Sturgeon is saved. This is not really looking good. So the Times again uh, talks about how uh, again, like you know, the First Minister says that she had no knowledge of the complaints against Alex Salmon until early April 2018. Now, Alex Salmon and his side are saying that this is not true. Uh, she lied to Parliament. Uh, she also lied about um, actually informing the, the establishment around them. They're saying that the civil service didn't tell them. Now, this is actually quite interesting because we have some comments from the opposition parties, Labour and Lib Dems, and we're going to talk about them. But Leslie Evans, who is now facing this pressure to actually not just resign, but actually get sacked uh, by the Scottish government, is, uh, yeah, she could be responsible. Absolutely fine. If she is responsible, she has to go. And others as well. But if they're going to be used uh, just to, you know, to throw them under the bus to save Nicola Sturgeon, that's a whole separate like, cover-up on a new level. Because we've had cover-ups until now, and Alex Salmon wants to expose them more. Again, we have to wait until Wednesday to actually see what he has to say. But if this actually happens, then this is worse than a cover-up. If the surgeon has to go, then she has to go. Now, uh, as we said, that the head of civil service is now in, in trouble. There are other people who are now being criticized as well. Uh, she, um, Leslie Evans, manages 
uh, more than 5,000 civil servants. And one informed source uh, has said that the SNP MSPs, member of the Scottish Parliament under committee, are preparing to throw her under the bus to save Nicola Sturgeon. Now, you have other opposition parties coming out to say a lot of things, including the, uh, the former leader of the Scottish Conservatives, Murdo Fraser, who said that uh, the decision to actually publish the evidence against Nicola Sturgeon is the right decision. The public deserves to know how half a million pounds of taxpayers' money was lost and why women were so badly let down. We must hear Alex Salmon's side of the story to uncover what really happened. The welcome decision makes that possible. It wasn't just Murdo Fraser who came out. We had the current leader of the Scottish Conservatives, Douglas Ross, who actually said that there are now even more serious questions about uh, when Nicola Sturgeon knew about the allegations and whether it's plausible that she was really in the dark. That's a good point because um, the Liberal Democrat Alex Cole Hamilton also said that you have to be a very bold civil servant to decide not to notify the First Minister of these allegations at the time when the changes to the complaint uh, procedure actually took place. Yeah, this is a good point. We, now, we hear all the time how Nicola Sturgeon as a manager is a control freak. She wants to know everything. Do you really think that, yes, it happens when the state civil service sometimes cover up things, sometimes they, you know, emit information. But do you really think in this case, when it's a party political matter, but also a governmental matter, that the civil servants would say, there are allegations against the former first minister and former leader of the SNP. Should we tell Nicola Sturgeon, the control freak manager, or should we just hide it? What's more likely? You could judge it for yourself. So I'm probably with Alex Cole Hamilton that it's unlikely, not impossible, just unlikely that civil servants would try to just avoid telling Nicola Sturgeon. Why would you do that? It's a part of political matter mainly anyway, and an individual matter. So um, that's what the SNP are saying, but also the Alex Salmon side are claiming that this is just not true. She knew, and the whole team knew, her husband knew. We don't know exactly until now because uh, Nicola Sturgeon has other priorities. Priorities such as replacing the Union flag with the European Union flag. <laughs> so she's now said that except for Remembrance Sunday, um, the governmental buildings in Scotland will no longer be using the Union flag, the, the flag of the country. They'll be using the EU flag, the fake flag of the European Union. Seriously, that's actually what's going to be happening. So for the whole year, apart from one day, she wants to use the EU flag, you know, virtual signaling because she's woke. She's very progressive and she wants to beg the EU to allow Scotland to uh, join. A lot of people have been saying that Scotland to rejoin the European Union. Scotland were never a member of the European Union. Uh, Scotland, as part of, the, part of the United Kingdom, was part of the European Union. So it's not Scotland rejoining the EU. It's Scotland joining the EU. That's the new fantasy. Um, everyone's going woke. Everyone's losing their mind, including the British police. We've got the Merseyside police coming out with this van going around that says being offensive is an offense. Yeah, it's serious. This is actually not a joke. It's not a meme. It's not photoshopped. They genuinely believe something that's actually subjective. For example, if you tell a joke that could be offensive, some people could find it offensive. Some people just might find it normal or just funny. No, no. Subjective matters don't matter anymore because, you know, it's just offensive. And that's an offense and the police will come after you. It got so bad, this backlash on social media <laughs> came out up to a point uh, where the, the police actually had to come out and apologize and make a U-turn. This is the statement that we have uh, from them saying that we would like to clarify that being offensive is not in itself an offense. Well, I am so glad that you guys actually clarified. They do say that this was supposed to encourage people to report you know, if anything serious happens. Um, but we do, this was incorrect, and we apologize for any confusion that have, this has actually caused. Are you seriously telling me that you guys, like the police, had a meeting, went through, you know, the, you know ideas for a slogan and the wording of you know, all that text, ordered the billboard, got the van and the car and everything, got someone to drive it around, and no one throughout all this, like the whole process, said, yeah, this is probably not correct, guys. This is not what we do. Somehow, at the end, when there was a backlash on social media, they decided to double check and say, oh, no, guys, this was a mistake. It was an error. 
joking are you seriously joking uh, as i said everyone's losing their mind i'm glad that at least they came out apologized and made a u-turn they finally listened to the british public so thank you Merseyside. <laughs> at least you did something right uh, but as i said uh, boris johnson has just announced the roadmap to unlock the country i'm going to do a proper video on this because there's a lot to actually mention when it comes to what's going to be happening uh, but in tonight's segment of news in your world we have the latest story from one of our subscribers matt got in touch with us uh, to tell us a sad story about uh, how he lost his grandmother recently to uh, dementia which is one of the cruelest diseases uh, and it's actually so it's very close to my heart and Lacey because uh, Lacey also lost uh, her grandmother to the same disease um, matt actually decided to and his family to start a fundraising campaign a donation campaign uh, for dementia uk and they had a target to reach 150 pounds uh, but thanks to the British public, despite the fact that everyone's going, and this is what Matt said, despite the fact that a lot of people don't have money, they have already reached uh, over 300 pounds, 315 pounds. So um, Lacey and I decided to um, help Matt and this campaign. So um, we're going to actually donate some money uh, to Dementia UK and this link. I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually put the link uh, to this donation in the description. If you guys also care about this cause, if you want to, I know it's, times are tough but if you want to you know just donate a couple of quid uh, to Dementia UK uh, to help this campaign because as I said this is uh, it's important to a lot of people because it, it does hit a lot of families unfortunately and uh, Lacey and I definitely care about this so put the link in the description uh, if you want guys want to um, do a you know, small donation just to help the campaign and Matt and his family that'll be absolutely amazing and if you guys also want to have a chance to be featured in the segment of news in your world uh, feel free to share us your stories any positive uh, happy story that you guys have uh, with any photos or videos related to it send it to lacy at myotc.co.uk uh, the, the email address is also in the description if you want to copy and paste it and you'll definitely get a chance to be featured in news in your world now speaking of uh, targets we talked about the donation targets but i was looking at the subscribers and we are currently on uh, 227,000 uh, subscribers. So thank you so much for everyone. We've recently, again, last 28 days, we've had 14, over 14,000 people subscribed to the channel. Uh, thank you so much. As uh, you guys know, it's, uh, in case you don't know, subscribing to the channel is free. I've had a couple of emails about this, actually, because uh, uh, some people think the, the membership and the subscription is actually the same thing. Subscribing to the channel is actually free. Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, it just helps you stay up to date with all the videos. Uh, the membership is that uh, you can find the link in the description or find the join button next to subscribe. That's completely separate. You get a lot of perks and benefits on top of the daily videos that we do. Uh, but I do want to have a, a goal for myself and for you guys. We had the roadmap. Boris Johnson announced that uh, by June, we're going to have all the restrictions lifted and pubs will open properly. So what I want to do is... Uh, Get you guys, get you guys to help me out to reach a quarter of a million subscribers. So 250,000. If we could get that by June, then I'm going to hire a pub and actually organize something small for you guys. Uh, again, I'm probably going to pick uh, whether it's going to be London or somewhere else. We'll actually decide that. But I want to actually do something for you guys as a thank you. So join this campaign. We have a new goal. I'm going to every now and then remind you and do a tracker to see where we are with it. Uh, but if we reach 250,000 subscribers by June, we're definitely going to do something in a pub so we could drink and celebrate. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm Maya Tusi, and I'll see you guys in the next video.